Hello everyone and welcome to another lecture of pulmonary medicine. Uh, today we are going to talk about solitary pulmonary nodules and lung cancer screening. Now these topics are really important uh, for the boards and they tend to ask them a lot. First, what's a solitary pulmonary nodule? A solitary pulmonary nodule is a spherical parenchymal lung obesity that's measuring up to three centimeters in its largest diameter. So if, if the lesion is more than three centimeters, this is not a nodule, this is a mass, all right? So we are basically talking about uh, lesions or nodules that are less than three centimeters in size, all right? And it's not associated with adenopathy nor invading other structures. Okay, uh, a solitary pulmonary nodule, uh, they can be benign and that's the more common uh, thing or they can be malignant, all right? There are many causes that call benign nodules, such as uh, benign tumors, okay, hemangiomas, uh, lung infarctions, inflammatory or infectious processes. They can lead to uh, small nodules, vascular or congenital uh, uh, problems in the lung. They can occur as benign small nodules that are less than three centimeters. Rounded atelectasis as well. Uh, for malignant uh, nodules, so we're basically talking about uh, stuff like car car carcinoma, uh, metastatic uh, cancer, and uh, lymphomas, all right? There are things from the history and the CT uh, of the patient that can uh, tell us more about uh, these nodules, if they tend to be like benign or malignant. Uh, the most important thing is the age, smoking, and the change in size. It's really important to know that Young non-smokers uh, with no change in size, no use for two to three years. This is this is for sure is not malignant. You can be sure about that. This uh, uh, nodule is benign. But an old patient that is smoker with an enlarging nodule uh, with with the with the years, this is probably uh, malignant, right? Other things like history of cancer uh, and asbestos exposure. They're really important yeah, to tell if it's malignant or benign. For uh, CT, the size of the nodule uh, is really important as we will uh, discuss this later. The borders, the borders of the nodule uh, is very important as sm a smooth border nodule tells us that this is more likely to be benign, all right? A speculated border, all right, or, or what's known as coron corona radiata border, this, is the, this tells us that this is uh, probably a malignant nodule. And the presence uh, of adenopathy, of course, is associated with malignant nodules. Another thing that they're going to ask a lot is the calcification. Uh, now, uh, with the uh, with the CT, you can uh, you can say that, you know, calci calcified nodules most probably are benign. All right. But this is not totally correct because there are uh, there are types of calcifications that are associated with specific types of of cancer. OK, so it's Sometimes it's preferred to know which which types of, of these calcifications. As you can see here, a diffuse or central or popcorn uh, or eccentric calcifications around the, this nodule. These, for sure, you can you can say these are benign uh, nodules. Okay, but there are things like the ground glass and the eccentric or irregular calcifications. These are more probably that uh, they tend to be. Uh, malignant okay now these cts as you can see here uh, here a uh, smooth border nodule this is more probably is a benign nodule this is a lobulated shape this is uh, in between you can say this is intermediate risk this has intermediate risk of be it of being malignant nodule now this one with irregular borders now this is clearly a malignant nodule all right and speculated or corona radiata type of uh, nodules. Now these are very, very likely that they are malignant nodules, All right? Evaluation, how to evaluate a patient that uh, you saw a, a small nodule incidentally. Incidentally, while you work up the patient for anything, any problem, all right? You saw a small nodule, on a new chest x-ray or CT scan, what's the first uh, or the best next step you do is you look for previous imagings, all right? You look for previous x-rays or CTs, 
um, to compare the size and look for any uh, other nodules that are uh, that they're missed or uh, have been uh, spotted in in the past. All right, a stable nodule. All right, a stable solid. Solid. This is important. A stable solid nodule, uh, which which can be uh, told by the the radiologist, of course, for over uh, two years. It rules out, or, or two to three years, it rules out malignancy. You can be sure about that this patient patient's uh, uh, nodule is benign. It doesn't require further workup. All right? But for ground glass nodules, now these tend to be more malignant, so they require more follow-up, probably uh, until like five years or sometimes more than that, okay? All right, the next thing is we look for benign features, like the radiologist will tell you, like this, this nodule size is really small and the young patient, uh, it's, it's got some uh, sort of uh, benign calcification uh, types, it has fat, all right? Th these usually benign uh, nodules and they can rule out malignancy, of course. A rapidly growing, a really fast growing uh, nodule, the, 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 the malignant ones, they, they grow, but usually uh, slowly with, with time, with months and years. But for, uh, for a rapidly growing nodule, this is maybe you think it's a vascular thing, you know? After that, you risk assist, uh, assist the, uh, the probability of malignancy, okay? Now this can be uh, uh, judged by the specialists like a pulmonologist, all right? Or you can, it can be uh, done using specialized calculators that you can find online. Uh, like the most common one used is the Mayo Clinic model for malignancy risk, risk score, all right? You determine the, the risk, okay, probability, and then uh, you, you work up uh, this patient. If it's low risk, you do serial CTs. If it's intermediate, you do the PET scan, all right? If it's high, uh, you surgically resect, all right? Now, you can do the biopsy, after the PET scan, if, if the PET scan is uh, more likely, you know, uh, you're gonna probably need a biopsy. Now, a negative biopsy does not rule out malignancy, but a positive one, uh, you can proceed with surgical resection, all right? Now, what's important for us to know is that um, the, the low risk and the intermediate ones, these are the ones like we're gonna need to know how we're gonna follow these. Now this, here where it comes, the Fleshner Society recommendations. Now these are radiology uh, recommendations, all right? Probably uh, all radiologists know this. For us, we only talk about a specific uh, ones, all right? specific guidelines from Fleshner uh, recommendations that will help us in the exams. And they are the most commonly asked because for us, they just gonna ask us stuff that, that's not obvious that it's malignant, all right? Because this is not our problem. It's gonna be like surgical problem. It's gonna be the pulmonologists uh, and consultations stuff. But for us, we're gonna need to know which ones that they require the serial CT scans and, and how we're gonna follow these patients for how long and, and how we're gonna do that, all right? This is really important when it's uh, more like a low risk or intermediate risk patient. PET scan is not valid in uh, things like, for example, if, if a patient's uh, uh, risk is intermediate, he, the answer is PET scan, all right? But uh, sometimes you cannot do that and you have to be careful in the, in the question when they ask you like, uh, there's a patient with a blah, blah, blah of risk, but maybe they mention one of these, especially the, the hypermetabolic states uh, like uncontrolled diabetes mellitus the hypermetabolic infections or, or vaccines, such as influenza vaccine, for example, all right? Now these, these will give you a, a false positive PET scan. So a PET scan cannot be done, uh, obviously, in, in such cases. Now, how to clinically assess the risk? Sometimes, you know, the, the, doc, the, the pulmonologist or the internal medicine doctor will use uh, a, like a judgment, like clinical judgment, for example. If, if the patient comes with a, uh, with a small uh, size uh, nodule that is, has got smooth border, all right, and he's young, all right, a young patient that's less than 40 years maybe, the site of the, of the nodule, usually if it's lower lobe, more probably it's, it's benign, 
right? It's up, if it's upper lobe, maybe it's malignant, okay? With negative PET scan, now these all, they can, you can, you can rule out uh, malignancy with these ones for sure. If it's malignant, uh, it's obviously malignant. I mean, you can proceed with, with directly saying this is a high risk and you're gonna proceed with surgical resection. And uh, of course, before you do surgical resection, you're gonna do the PET scan anyhow. So an old patient with, with more than two centimeters in size, all right, currently smoking or, or past smoker in upper sight with, with a, hands, a cancer history maybe, all right? Speculated border, as we said, positive PET scan. Now these ones, you don't need even to do any other uh, assessment and maybe you proceed with surgical resection. Now in between is the intermediate one. And we said, we talked about this, like which one uh, that's gonna like help guide us through, uh, is it more likely benign or is it more likely uh, high risk malignant? Malignant is the PET scan. The PET scan is obviously about the intermediate probability. For the low, for the low risk ones, uh, we tend to use the Fleischner guidelines uh, as we'll see uh, more uh, commonly with these ones. Now, these are not the full guidelines, but they're the ones they can ask about in inter internal medicine, uh, especially especially uh, the ones that that are intermediate size. Now the Fleischner guidelines they they ask you about like is it low risk is it high risk? This is from the, as we said the age, all right, the the smoking history. Usually these ones are important. Okay, if it's low risk, then you you guy this guides us by size. Now. Less than six millimeters. Now, obviously, above above eight. This is this is uh, intermediate, uh, or or more like more likely to be like uh, malignant. So you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna do CT at, at three months, and then we and we're gonna do PET scan and, and tissue sampling probably. But the ones that are uh, usually they ask about these ones from six to eight millimeters. Now these are the ones that need uh, really follow up with. Uh, CT, all right? You follow up for two years, as you can see here. You do it first at uh, six or, or and or 12 months, all right? And then at 18 to, uh, to 28 months, all right? Now, if it's still uh, in the same size as we said before for solid nodule, this is um, uh, benign, all right? You rule out malignancy, okay? For the high risk, it's, it's mostly the same. It's mostly the same except that below six millimeters it's optional you can you can uh choose not to follow up no follow up maybe but also maybe you do ct at 12 months okay now for pet and and tissue sampling uh at the tissue sampling it depends sometimes they ask about the location is it are you going to do it uh percutaneous or are you going to do it uh with with uh with a uh, bronchoscope you know if it's more central in the chest, you choose the transbronchial uh, uh, biopsy. If it's it says it's preferable, you, you choose the transthoracic, right? And as we said, if the biopsy is negative, that does not rule out malignancy, all right? Now, lung cancer screening. Now, this is uh, really important, uh, and it's uh, a, a new topic. I mean, it's not a new, but uh, it's been uh, for a while. Uh, and and it's uh, changing uh, a lot, all right? Um, and it's re really related to the uh, uh, topic of solitary pulmonary nodules. Why is that? Because, uh, you know, uh, lung cancer screening, uh, they did studies that led to uh, establish the result of decreased mortality in high-risk patients. Now, the high-risk patients are the ones that are old Asian and heavy smokers, all right? But, however, the, uh, the, the lung cancer screening, screening led to increased number of false positives, okay? It means the false positive rate is 95%. It means, it means from all the ones that uh, did the cancer screening, 95%, they found that these small nodules they are that they are benign. Only five percent, only five percent turned out to be malignant. All right, in these ones, that's good. It decreased the the mortality risk, but there are ninety five ones 
that are um, salty bimineral nodules that were discovered that they were uh, benign. Okay, so they required additional investigations. Okay, required additional investigations, and it's it's costly. All right, so they come up with this guideline that aims at detection of lung cancer in er in its early stages. You do it annually, every every year, every year probably. Uh, this this increases the the risk of uh, red radiation. That's why they use low dose CT scan. Okay, uh, in which a group. Uh, it's it's uh, the guidelines are different from uh, place to place, but the the most common ones the U.S. Preventative Task Force they, they recommend from 15 to 80 years old patients with a, a heavy smoking history, uh, specifically a 30 pack year history of smoking, currently smoking or quit within the past 15 years. If 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 it if he or she quit uh, for more than 15 years, you don't have to. Uh, do uh, the screening, all right? When to stop the screening? Obviously, if past 80 years old, or if quit smoking uh, for more than 15 years, as we said, all right? Or with limited life expectancy. Obviously, there is no benefit of finding this cancer and what we're gonna do about it, you know? Uh, how to calculate the uh, uh, smoking uh, pack here, uh, is here. All right, uh, that, that was a small uh, lecture. Uh, thank you for listening. I hope you like it and uh, subscribe and give a like and uh, feel free to, to comment and ask uh, any questions. Uh, thanks again.